Thomas Struth uses photography to capture spaces and people in various countries and series. In the Unconscious Places series, he recorded industrialized cities via a systematic documentation of ordinary streets that best summarizes the city, and that best captures the sound of the city. The black and white photos were shot at eye level in the middle of the road, so streets serve as orthogonals that lead the viewer's eye. He uses long exposure to achieve maximum sharpness, and composes with a central one-point perspective, so as to emphasize the continuity between pictorial space and the natural world, and to objectively record the subject matter, instead of capturing in an artistic or cinematic way. Struth believes that buildings are open to interpretation. They are a significant bearer of the city's histories past and present, inviting us to examine their origin, purpose and current function. By capturing these places objectively, he excavates the city's social, political and historical factors for the viewer's inspection. He reveals the impact of war on our current societies and our lives. Next is the Family Portrait series. Just like buildings, families at their houses reveal a lot about their history, social behaviors, values and cultures, and relationship with society, all of which are open to viewers' interpretation. There is always a reason why the families and cities were started in the first place. Also, he refuses to take snapshots of just any building, or family. He would get familiar with the family first through conversations, before taking the shot. The shot is taken through a collaborative approach. He encourages the sitters to select the setting, organize themselves within the frame and look directly at the camera. As he uses long exposure, the sitters have to pose for a long period of time to avoid blurring, making them look very static, evoking the conventions of 19th century portrait photography. His photos hope to encourage contemplation of family relationships and the innate psychological intensity present whenever a family gathers. He also invites viewers to explore the personal and cultural dynamics that condition how they see themselves and others, and how their identities condition these perceptions. The subject matter from the museum series are people looking at art in Western museums. He carefully waits for unstaged spontaneous moments at the museum, and composes the frame such that the people seem to be extensions of the figures in the artworks they are looking at, highlighting the relationship between people and museums, and the complex social ritual of seeing and being seen. Through this subject matter, he hopes to explore the process of looking, an activity that he hopes the viewer will engage in with his photographs, and become a spectator who is aware of his spectating role. His subject matter becomes the very viewer's viewing art, and their diverse reactions become an interesting phenomenon to be unpacked by the viewer. Why are they here? What can they obtain? How will these works impact their lives? Struth also wants to explore the relationship between past and present, of how the past shapes the present, similar to his photos of families and street scenes. Struth's subject matter from his Paradise series are tropical forests from all over the world, stemming from his fascination with the Mayan culture, and its intricate relationship to nature. Just like previous series, the forests reveal certain aspects of the country they are in, such as the unique types of plants found there, and how they contribute to the society's culture. It also reveals a utopic and peaceful history of mankind before urbanization, and serves as a reflection at the turn of the millennium, as to what kind of utopian or progressive thinking might be possible, after the end of the Cold War in 1991. Despite the lack of visual hierarchy in these photographs, similar to the works of abstract expressionist Jackson Pollock, Struth's emphasis for these works are not the forests, but rather the viewer looking at them. The forests serve as an incubator for the viewers, to heighten their awareness of how they observe, contemplate or experience artworks in the world. Despite having a variety of subject matter, including photos of complex scientific research facilities, Struth remains consistent in his ideas, to use photography as an intellectual process to arrive at a better understanding of people or places, and their historical and phenomenological connections. His photographs aim to give pause, to invite viewers to resist immediate consumption, but rather to investigate as they view the work. He was inspired by his teachers, the Betchers. They document disappearing industrial architecture in an objective and impersonal manner, studying their formal properties, and exposing the objective truth underlying contemporary ills, as propagated by the new objectivity movement. He was also inspired by Renaissance paintings' ability to represent the complexity of the historical moment in which they were created. Their large presence, stillness and clarity of detail also has the ability to silence his inner restlessness. He hopes to achieve a similar effect to bring his viewers into contemplation, as when seeing those historical paintings, scrutinizing every detail but never seeing everything. Struth's photographs are straightforward recordings of scenes. He utilizes long exposure to get high-quality resolution, and lighting for contrast. He sees the camera as a cold, objective and mechanical eye, a communicative and analytical medium, a recording of the real. 
With this medium, he can excavate the true histories and essence of the places and people for the viewers to examine carefully and contemplate thoughtfully. With this desire to capture the truth, Struth shuns digital manipulation and staging his subjects, unlike his contemporaries, Andreas Gursky and Cindy Sherman. He avoids the spectacle and exoticism, and instead embraces the mundane. To him, presenting the real is more interesting than showing the viewers the photographer's view. He believes that photographs may lie, but they can also reveal legible traces of structures, social and psychological. Through extensive preparation and selecting, composing and capturing his images prior to taking the photos, Struth hopes that his rigorous examination and contemplation will be reciprocated by the viewers when they see his images.